Choosing the best graphics card for your next gaming PC build is arguably one of the most important decisions you'll make in the entire part selection process. But with a flurry of new next-gen GPUs and massive price drops on the last-gen cards, it can be really tricky to know which to pick. Which is why today I'll be breaking apart the good GPUs from the bad and recommending the best cards for a wide range of budgets. Looking at great options for 1080p, 1440p and 4K gaming, as well as discussing the current state of the GPU market. So let's dive into it after a quick word from today's video sponsor. Newegg have launched their Fantas Tech Sale, their biggest sale of the summer. With a whole host of great deals on the latest tech, there's never been a better time to upgrade your rig or supercharge your setup up with some new gear from Newegg. There's no membership required to get access to these deals and Newegg's handy online tools make finding your next tech purchase easier than ever. Whether it's their laptop finder that looks at your use case, budget and ideal feature set to find the perfect notebook upgrade or their online PC builder tool that lets you spec up a great gaming PC. Check out the Newegg Fantas Tech sale at the first link in the description below and I'll round a particle of our favourite Newegg Fantas Tech deals on our website geekawatt.com. I'm going to start things off with an important piece of context about the current state of the GPU market and how graphics card naming schemes actually work. But if you'd like to skip straight to the recommendations, feel free to use the timestamps on the navigation bar below. Now the GPU market has two main players, AMD and Nvidia. Intel are also looking to join the party, but I think we'll have to wait for their second gen Intel Arc lineup before we can really recommend those cards to you guys. The drivers and other optimizations are simply a bit too young at this stage. Both AMD and Nvidia create cards for a wide range of budgets, spanning from around the $150 or $200 mark right up to behemoth GPUs that cost more than 2000 That means that at every single price point, you've got options to choose from between AMD and Nvidia, an all-important competition that the market hasn't always seen that consistently over the last few years. That makes now an awesome time, by the way, to be a gamer with so many options to choose from. On the Nvidia side, first of all, their cards start with either an RTX or GTX prefix. Cards with an RTX prefix support ray tracing, while cards with a GTX prefix don't. Nvidia haven't released any GTX cards in about three years, so we won't worry about those ones too much. The first two numbers of the naming scheme indicate the generation. For Nvidia, 40 series is their latest generation. We previously saw 30 series, 20 series, 10 series. You kind of get the picture. The last two numbers then designate how high-end the card is. Nvidia's top-end GPU being the 4090, while their current lowest-end 40 series GPU is the 4060. You have to go back to last gen's 30 series, if you want to buy a 50 tier card. You may also see some GPUs with a TI or TI designation at the end. Any card with TI is basically the normal 4070 with a bit of a rocket boosted up its bottom to take it and give it that little bit more power. But generally speaking, the higher the number, the better the performance. All of AMD's cards have an RX suffix at the start, with the four numbers afterwards indicating both the generation of GPU and the tier. So we're on the RX 7000 series at the moment, before we had the 6000 series and the higher end the number the higher end the card so an RX 7900 will always perform better than an RX 7800 or 7600 GPU. AMD have also decided they want in on the letters game if the card's got some letters at the end either XD or XTX it basically provides a boost in performance over the stock model meaning a 7900 XTX is better than a 7900 XT which would theoretically be better than a theoretical 7900 with no letters at all. They don't make these things particularly easy to understand, but we'll pop a list on your screen now of all the latest GPUs ordered from lowest in performance to highest in performance so you can get a rough idea of what on earth is going on. But is either of these brands overall a better option before we look at the generic recommendations? And is there a camp where you should pledge your allegiance to nice and early? The short answer is no. Like with all things in life, AMD have some pros and some cons and Nvidia the same. An Nvidia benefit, for example, is that their ray tracing is superior at the moment to AMD. And their AI resolution scaling tech, which we can get into later, is also a little bit superior. But AMD tend to be far more competitive on price, historically because their cards weren't maybe quite as good, but that's no longer the case, and tend to be more generous when it comes to video memory, meaning that their cards are arguably a little bit more future-proofed. 
AMD also tend to get better with their drivers over time, meaning continual software updates for their graphics cards make them better and better performers, where Nvidia tend to get things right from the gate, but give you less game optimization as time goes on. Those are general rules, but things to certainly bear in mind. What doesn't help in the context of the GPU market is that Nvidia have had a bit of a bad patch over the last six months with negative PR and bad releases. Their 4000 series really hasn't hit the spot with lots of people. Which brings me on to the final piece of important info to know. Previously, when it came to graphics cards, you would buy the latest and greatest model and you wouldn't stray from the current generation. Going back and looking at the older cards as a second option was always an inferior choice, but that isn't the case anymore. GPUs have come on so far that our roundup today will be recommending both RX 6 and 7000 tier GPUs, and similarly on the Nvidia side, 3000 and 4000 series cards. So without any further ado, let's dive into what the best cards are that you can buy right now. Let's kick things off with the 1080p resolution and the cheapest GPUs in the lineup. Links to everything will of course be down below as usual. On the very bottom end, the lowest amount that I would recommend you spend on a GPU is just over $200. You can pick up an AMD Radeon RX 6600 for about 220 give or take, but they're very often on offer and prices do sometimes dip even below this. Now, this card does have some drawbacks, but on the whole is a sensational bet for the price point. You get 8GB of GDDR6 memory. 8GB is enough for 1080p, but if you're looking to game at 1440p, you probably want 10 or 12 to be on the safe side. It also works fantastically well in both esports titles and AAA games. You're not necessarily resigning yourself to just playing Fortnite and CSGO with a card like this. Other more intensive titles like Warzone 2, Apex, and even new games like Hogwarts Legacy are all very possible. The AMD Radeon RX 6600 XT is an upgraded version of this card that's also worth considering, but at this price point, for those of you looking for a bit more oomph when it comes to 1080p gaming, we'd urge you to closely consider AMD's Radeon 6650 XT. The 6650 XT was on a refresh, if you will, to the 6600 XT. VRAM is the same, but you get better clock speeds and better overall performance. It's a card that's also seen amazing driver optimizations and an R testing managed to hold its own against Nvidia's new RTX 4060, a card that's going to set you back at least $50 more. AMD then showing themselves here at the budget end of the market to be the most competitive. On the Nvidia side, there aren't really many options at this price point that make sense. The 3060 is a solid bet with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, but we often find the pricing to be a little too high, and while the VRAM is beneficial, truth be told, the rasterization performance is weaker than their rivals. If you're looking to spend a little bit more money and still plunk your fist firmly in the 1080p camp, we'd also recommend looking at AMD's new RX 7600. This provides similar performance to the new 4060, giving you a few more frames than the 6650 XT on average. The 7600 is a solid performer all around, but is a little bit inhibited by its 8GB of VRAM, where it would be able to perform better at 1440p had it a little bit more. It's not necessarily the card's ability to chew through FPS that's the problem is that it hits that 8 gigabyte frame buffer before it can really yield those amazing 1440p performance. On the Nvidia side of the equation, you've also got the 4060. This is a card that boasts solid rasterization performance but falls short to AMD 7600. The card we would instead recommend if you'd like to spend just below $300. We've actually seen the 7600 go as low as $260 US dollars upon occasion, which is insane. And it is a card that undoubtedly provides great rasterization performance for not only 1080p, but also some 1440p gaming too. If you're looking to move up to 1440p, there is one clear winner in this space right now. And at the budget end of the 1440p spectrum, that is the AMD Radeon RX 6700 and 6700 XT. The 6700 can actually be found as low as $280, and with 12 gigabytes of video memory, is more future-proof than cards like the AMD 7600, which only has eight. The 6700 also has legs for 1440p gaming, but we'd recommend also considering the 6700 XT or 6750 XT for those of you looking to push 1440p that little bit further. We've been incredibly impressed with AMD's offerings on the budget end of the 1440p spectrum, and to be totally blunt, Nvidia's alternatives don't come close. In the interest of fairness, the closest Nvidia card here would be the 4060 Ti, a GPU that 
retails for just under $400. That's in some instances $100 or $80 more than the Radeon 6700 and 6700 XT, and it only comes with 8GB of VRAM as standard. You have to pay $100 more for 16 gigs. So for 1440p, avoid the 4060 Ti. It simply doesn't make a great deal of sense. NVIDIA's RTX 4070 is a more welcome addition to their lineup when it comes to high-end 1440p gaming, but you will pay an NVIDIA price premium for the privilege, something which makes it a hard card to recommend. In fact, what makes the 4070 so tricky to recommend is AMD's own 6950 XT, which I actually have in my hand just here. You can buy an RTX 4070 with its 12 gigabytes of video memory and a fairly basic, albeit sufficient, Asus Dual Cooler for $598. Or you can buy AMD's top of the range last gen 6950 XT for $599. This has 16 gigabytes of VRAM, far superior straight rasterization performance, and I mean, it looks awesome. The Asus Dual card's nice, but it's intended to be a budget option. This thing is sick. There is a disadvantage to the 6950 XT. It's going to consume far more power than this card here. We've got one 8-pin connector on this GPU versus three 8-pin connectors on the 6950 XT. But providing you've got a little bit more money, maybe another $30 for a beefy power supply that can cope, this would be our recommended card every day of the week. And this is, without making this video an NVIDIA rant, this is the problem when we're trying to recommend NVIDIA GPUs. AMD are so aggressive on pricing with their range at the moment. Something which I'm guessing can't last forever when all these cards eventually do sell out that we'd urge you to look at the AMD options instead. And we were talking about 1440p gaming. This is a 4K GPU. So I suppose this is kind of our recommendation in both categories. This wipes the floor with so many cards at 4K. Even a GPU like the 4070 Ti or 4080 is going to struggle to match the 6950 XT. And the 4080 is going to set you back more than $1,000. But what if you want to go for true 4K gaming? 4K with plenty of leg room. You want the new generation rather than the capable or be it caveated RX 6950 XT, well, that's where we'd recommend AMD's Radeon 7900 XT. You can pick one of these up right now for under $800 and have a pick of coolers at that price point. Remember, all pricing mentioned today is subject to change, so check out the links below for the latest info. That is less than the RTX 4070 Ti for about 20% more straight rasterization performance. Crazy. And the story for AMD gets even better still if you want top of the range 4K gaming. Without spending an exorbitant amount of money on the 4090, but more on that in a moment, the 7900 XTX would be our recommended bet. You don't gain loads of extra performance over the 7900 XT, but for only $100 more, it does push you to the very edge of what AMD can offer, making it a great option for 4K gaming. If you want the absolute best of the best in every regard, the 4090 is still our recommended option. But at around $1,700, some are available for less than that, it can be a tricky GPU to recommend. And those of you who are looking to buy a 4090 will probably already know that you want a 4090 by the time you come to watch this video. So what's the conclusion? I mean, first, Nvidia aren't mega competitive when it comes to pricing at the moment. That may change and we're in an ever evolving industry. Nvidia obviously think they can sell these cards at their current price points and good luck to them. But our recommendations would be as follows. For 1080p gaming on a super budget, buy the 6600 non-XT. A bit more cash to spend, consider the 6 6650 XT or 6700 non-XT. For 1440p gaming, we'd recommend the 6750 XT or on the higher end, something like a 6800 or even this 6950 XT for top of the range 1440p gaming. While those looking to game at 4K will need to spend a bit more. The 6950 XT also fits the bill at 4K for the lower end of that spectrum, while AMD's 7900 range are a better overall 4K shout. Those of you who want the app absolute best of the best without putting a limit on your budget and your bank account, the 1490 is what we would recommend at the top end of the gaming spectrum. And with that, that just about wraps it up. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, get subscribed to see more from us. Thank you for watching. And as always, we'll see you hopefully in the next one.